It's Wednesday, November 29th here at the West End Gun Club. Out here at the Rimfire Range, about to do a run through of the December 2023 NRL 22 course of fire. Already set up uh, one of the stages, although I need to get the props. Just doing some testing, uh, warming up the barrel a little bit. It's about 40, 45 degrees right now. And uh, if you can see closely here, I have a flat, a flat uh, shoe trigger. And if you if you paid attention to any of my 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 vlogs, you know that I I was running a pro curved. The reason why I have a flat shoe here is because um, I got another diamond trigger over the Black Friday weekend. It was you know there was a bunch of sales, so I picked one up. I wanted to uh, test the theory that there was some sear engagement issues with the my trigger in this Voodoo 360 was causing this really weird tension on the bolt closure. And it was it was resolved initially when I installed it, but after I fired it, now it's kind of back. So I'm not entirely sure if it's just the way the geometry is or if I need to try another trigger, but it is still kind of inconsistent on the bolt closure. It's like tight, right? Which doesn't affect the accuracy or anything or the operation, but it does get tight in there when you try to close it sometimes. So it's it's kind of weird. I don't know why. It's, and it's on an empty chamber. I did have one light strike this morning with LaPua Center X, which is concerning though, after I did this trigger swap. Um, so not sure what to make of that. Maybe I, it is cold out here. I may need to open up my bolt though and clean off the firing pin and the firing pin spring because there oil might be in there. So who knows? Uh, but you should run that dry, if anything. Um, but we'll go ahead and go ahead and do a run through of the course of fire. But anyway, uh, one last thing as you saw with my Garmin Zero C1 Pro, I did end up getting the really res sorry, not the really the Area 1419 arm mount because I did, you know, I, I, I saw what they did with this so that you can actually mount it forward because they designed the the arm 17 interface on two sides so that it'll go, you know, horizontally or you know, fore and aft. What I didn't realize though, I was so stupid, is that you're gonna have to mount it upside down. So if you want to run it forward of your rifle like this, you'll be running the, you'll be, you'll be orientating the Garmin this way, but it'll be upside down. Uh, not sure if I want to do it like that, but it's an it's an option. And I had a spare really right stuff knob clamp that's for Arm 17, and then I have this Coltac case for it. So the Coltac case. Is basically just this Cordura case, and it can fit the Garmin attached to a mount, at least the Air 419 mount and the clamp, and then it has a space for the tripod mount that it comes with. And then I have on this side, I did put my uh, my uh, unknown munitions arca plate in a little Ziploc bag there, just in case I want to run it on on an arca clamp like this on top of my scope mount diving board. But let's go ahead and get started with this course of fire. The first stage we're running through is called Wobbly Reindeer, 120 second part time, 12 rounds. We have three targets, a one inch at 50 yards, a two inch at 64, and a three inch at 90 yards. No real restrictions here. You're going to start standing rifle in all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, you will take a position on the top of the sawhorse and engage the targets in the following order. Near twice, middle once, far once, middle twice, far once, near once, far twice, near once, middle once. So basically you're working your way, you're working your, you're working your way backwards and then back to the front each time. So, and then you're going to do a two shots for the first round, first uh, target engagement. So start near two, two, one, one, you know, and then start middle two, one, one, start far two, then come back to the closest one in one. Pretty easy to remember. Um, seems pretty straightforward to me. So uh, let's try this one out.
fighting the blue mag trains here, don't I? Ninety three six one. If the stage looked kind of easy, it really is straightforward. However, I felt like my position was kind of bad. Um, I had a lot of wobble. Um, my gun was a little bit back heavy for some odd reason. I'm not entirely sure why. It's a little back heavy, but um, I was getting a little wobble on here trying to get this bag on the stabilized. Probably should have just went. I probably should have used my knee, to be honest, because I don't even know what I was thinking about that. I tend to shoot kind of both knees down and forward, but, but I was being an idiot and I could have just taken a, taken a uh, position here with my right knee up and been a lot more stable when I was taking these shots and less wobble. Um, so. Don't do what I did during the during the live fire run through. Definitely, uh, if you can, uh, we are shooting an upper angle here at the West End Gun Club, so this is easier for us to do in this manner. But if you're shooting flat ground, you might have to get some kind of fill bag here to fill in this dead space here, especially if you're short like me. Because if there were flat ground, I probably, I guess, I could still do it. So, in any case, definitely use your knee for this sta uh, for this course or stage in the course of fire. It'll help you out quite a bit. Um, but even then, I guess if you're still good enough to shoot without your knee support here, you should be okay. I didn't hold over, I, sorry, I didn't dial elevation. I even dialed parallax, to be honest. I left my parallax at 50 and shot it and didn't make any changes there. So, so the targets are big enough at one, two, and three that it shouldn't be a big deal. But let's go ahead and move on to the next stage in this course of fire. The next stage of fire we're running through is called Sugar Plums Dancing. 120 second part time, 12 rounds. We have two banks of targets. We have a one and a half and a two inch on a double hanger at 80 yards. And then we have a three and a four inch on a double hanger at 96 yards. This is the bonus stage. So if you get ex if you have extra time on the clock, you get bonus points. You're gonna start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, we take a prone position and engage the targets with one shot each in the following order. Near small, near large, far large, far small. Then repeat the four shot sequence until two more times or until time expires, of course. So again, near small, near large, far large, far small. Pretty straightforward. Um, but let's go ahead and run through this prone stage. What the heck, was I short loaded on that? Sixty five point seven two. Not much to really say about this stage. I spent, took 65 seconds. However, I slowed myself down because I miscounted and I, and I uh, short loaded this or I used the, the short mag on that one. And so uh, probably lost about five seconds there. But you can race through this. I took a little bit of time because my, my dope this morning is a little bit off. I think it's about a tenth off. So I was kind of figuring out how to favor it. And there's a little bit of a wind out there. But anyway, uh, you can, as long as you know your gun is shooting and your, your dope is correct and all your trajectory is good, you should be able to race through this one pretty quickly. And if you're, uh, you're comfortable with it, you can probably finish with like 40 seconds or even 30 seconds. There's no dialing needed. I put on 1.0 
to for the uh, 80 yard target, and then 96 was about 1.7, but I think in reality it's like 1.1 and maybe 1.8. But I dialed one, I dialed one on the gun or on the scope, shot straight away, of course, for the 80, and then I just held up about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 for the uh, 96 yard target. But again, pretty easy and straightforward stage, but let's go ahead and go on to the next stage in the course of fire. Next stage we're running through is called Up on the Rooftop, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have two banks of targets. We have the full KOL rack, that's quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch at 35 yards, and we have a one and a half inch on a single hanger at 50 yards. Restriction, no part, no part of your body or equipment may touch the ground. So here's a weird thing about the scoring on this one. It's 10 points per impact on the far target, but the KYL will have different scoring. The quarter inch is worth 10, the half inch is worth 8, the three quarters worth 6, and the one inch is worth 4. Max is 100 points. You're going to start standing, rifle, and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, you will ascend the rooftop and alternate between the KYL rack and the far target one shot each. You will start with your choice of target on the KYL and then engage the far target. And you'll repeat. So you'll get up, pick one of the KYL, take a shot, you'll declare it, take the shot, shoot the far one, go back to the KYL, declare which one you're shooting at, take the shot, and then go to the far target and keep repeating that. It's going to give you the opportunity to switch the target you're going to shoot on the KYL, so if you miss the first time on the second round, you'll go ahead and say, oh, I'm going to declare a different target, or you'll declare the same one. Um, you must announce which target on the KOL you are engaging initially before starting and when you make a target change. So I guess what they're going to say is, once you declare the one time, unless you're going to change, it is assumed you're shooting the same KYL target. So if you say I'm going to shoot the half half inch, and you shoot then you shoot half inch, you shoot far, and you come back and shoot the KYL, they're going to assume you're shooting half inch unless you suddenly see yell out, I'm shooting one inch or something. And then for safety, the rifle may be handed to or retrieved from the competitor when ascending and descending. So what they just mean is that if for some reason you can't hold the rifle while you're getting on the rooftop, you're, you know, you have some issues there, somebody can hand you your rifle after you get on the rooftop. So that's just a safety precaution, if you need it. Let's go ahead and run through this one. Shoot the quarter inch. This bag is a little bit weird. Take the fill out of that quarter inch. Quarter inch. Quarter inch. Quarter inch. Another light strike. Overall, this is a pretty simple stage. Pick your choice of bags. I used the full size game changer. The sticky though, I feel like it was kind of sagging on one side. I think I need to take a little bit of fill out of here so it settles a little bit better. And probably it needs to break in because it's a little stiffer than a wax canvas due to that sticky material. Um, so it's kind of tilting to one side early on. I had to readjust my rifle to get it on there. Um, but I did run a rear bag as well. So I ran this uh, Coltac Mega Bag. And basically all I'm doing is a glorified bench rest here. It's just getting the, getting the bag underneath and that's it. Not even for my body. It's just mainly to, to get this, uh, to get the uh, buttstock supported here. And it's pretty stable. But yeah, pretty straightforward stage. Uh, I should be able to clean this one and get max points on it. Uh, unless it's really windy, you should be able to get max points. Let's move on to the next stage of fire. Next stage of fire is called Milk and Cookies, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have two banks of targets. We have a one and a half inch and a two inch on a double at 62. And we have a two and a half inch on a single hanger at 87. No real restrictions here. You're gonna start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. 
On the star signal, you will engage the target in the following manner and order. Top of the left cinder block, far target, two shots. Top of the vertical tire, all targets near to far, small to large, one shot each. Through the center of the tire, all targets near to far, sm near to far small to large, one shot each. And then top of the right block, far target with two shots. So you're gonna shoot the two center blocks, far target, and then this, the tire will be near to far, small to large, one shot each. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pretty straightforward, uh, but we'll see how this one goes. Put that target there it is. through the center of the tire. I guess you don't have to rest it. Let's see. Oh, I lost it. I did better than I thought I was going to do just diving into this stage. Uh, I forgot my Coltac D-Bag, that flat Arca, Arca rail mounted bag. It's the D-Bag on the Area 419 gamer plate. And I was going to shoot prone, just have that on there on my forend, shoot prone off the cinder blocks and use this as kind of a, a rear support type thing on my elbow. I forgot it today, so I, you know, I just said I'll just shoot with this full-size Game Changer Sticky, and I shot it off the center block in this manner, which forced me to go into like a sitting position instead of going prone. And I'm glad I did that because I was still able to scrunch my body, get the gun up on that up angle, and get a stable shot off on both center blocks without issue. So I think most people at the West End Gun Club, if you come to our facility, you might want to just shoot your, if you have a Game Changer, just shoot it vertical like this, and you should be able to get enough elevation on the gun that you can you can angle it up and take a shot from a sitting position very, you know, relatively comfortably and take, make a stable shot. Off the tire, wasn't, it was a little wobbly, but not too much, surprisingly enough. I am using this, I have this nice 35 inch BF Goodrich KO2, which is a three ply, I think, sidewall. So it's really stiff. This Bridgestone Dueler though is a little thin. And so that one wobbles, but the base is pretty stable. So um, that works out. But the one thing that wasn't really clear is how you're gonna shoot through the center of the vertical tire. So it just says shoot through the center of the vertical tire. It doesn't say that you had to rest your gun in the center of the vertical tire, you just had to shoot through it. So I think you're okay just resting your gun on the, the bottom tire like this as long as you're, you're shooting through the center tire. I think that'll be fine because most people can't get their gun into the tire, the, set, the ver center of the vertical tire without making contact with, the, with this bottom tire. So I think this is fine, and that's how I shot it, and I think I interpret everyone else should be able to shoot it too. So this should be relatively stable. In any case, that's it for this stage. Pretty straightforward. I thought it was pretty surprisingly simple. Uh, finished with 99 seconds plus a lapse. So not too bad, I had extra time. Let's move on to the last stage in this course of fire. Final stage we're running through is called Trim the Tree, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have two targets. They're both two and a half inch targets on double hangers, but they are at 78 yards spaced 10 yards apart. So we have two two and a half inch targets on double hangers. One on the left, one on the right, 10 yards apart, 78 yards. No real restrictions here. Um, again, 10 point 
uh, print pack, no points possible. You can start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, you will take a position on the prop and engage the right target, then the left target, one shot each. So right one, left one. Repeat this engagement from five different positions. So basically you're gonna pick five points, two shots each firing point, le right then left. Positions are only the outside edges of the two by fours, not the center rungs, no position may be repeated. Um, I would normally use my flat bag because it would allows my gun to fit better, but since there's space above, I should be able to run my, my game changer okay. I have my mega bag hanging there, but I'm not sure if I'll use it. So I'll shoot, shoot without it, just for fun. Let's go ahead and run through this one. There. Should not have stood up. Wasted time there. Shooting. Ah, shoot top. Ah, I pulled it to the right. Dropped one round. This stage isn't too bad. I finished with 109 elapsed, which is kind of borderline as far as running out of time. I dropped one round. I ended up shooting off my knees for the second lowest and the middle one. I went, you know, second lowest, middle, middle, second lowest, and then back to this one. I probably should have went prone. A um, couple things to, that you want to think about, though, as far as uh, timing here. Granted, you're only taking five positions here, so there's not much movement. However, you might want to optimize movement anyway. So I think earlier when I was on this side, I said I shouldn't have stood up. So what was happening was... I shot this here, and I stood up to adjust my bag. The problem is, now you're making excessive movements, right? If you're on your knees and you're gonna shoot off your knees for the next stage, don't get off your knees. So, it's kinda a little mistake there. Um, and then, going up to this one, I just said, I didn't know what I was gonna shoot after that. And so, either way, I'm breaking position, I'm coming off my knees to either shoot standing or shoot prone. I elected to go standing because I think it was just easier to just uh, to stand up as opposed to get back in the prone. The only mistake was I just didn't get a stable shot off here. So uh, I didn't have my flat bag on the, the Coltac D-bag on the gamer plate. Although I felt like this didn't really hurt me much. You can kind of see though, maybe on camera, she's this state here. My gun doesn't really fit underneath. So you have barely enough room on this edge right here. Um, I was kind of cheating though, because I was able to get my, because the way we're shooting at the angle, I kind of jammed my scope a little bit against it, like the cap, to give it a little less wobble. So that's one thing you might want to think about um, to, get, to gain this stage. Uh, but all in all, it's pretty straightforward. I felt comfortable most of the way through. But it's a big target, two and a half inches, so at 78 yards. So it's sure to hit them. It's just all about movement and speed. Anyway, that's it for this uh, course of fire. Let's go ahead and pull everything in and uh, we'll wind down this range vlog. All done here at the range. Everything's packed up, locked up the container, about to roll out of here. 
The NRL 22 December 2023 course of fire is actually not too bad this month. So I think it should be a nice, moderately difficult. It should be like novice to moderately difficult. I don't think it'll be too much on the scale. I mean, if we were gonna, I never ranked them like from one to 10 as far as difficulty. I'll put this around a five, to be honest. Uh, nothing really spectacular here. And there's a couple nuances though with this range. I need to make sure that I have target stands tall enough because from the spe specific positions on two of the stages, you're not gonna be able to see the target. So I have to make some adjustments for that. But other than that, no other issues here. So if you wanna shoot the December match here at the West End Gun Club, just a reminder that we did move it up because normally we're fourth Sunday of the month. However, fourth Sunday of December is Christmas Eve and I'm not gonna hold a match on Christmas Eve. So I got approval to move it to the second Sunday in December, which is December 10th, because that's the rimfire range is unoccupied. So we will be having our range, our, our range, our NRL 22 match December 10th, Sunday, Sunday, December 10th. So if you're interested, um, you're free that weekend, definitely come on out. And uh, registration has already been opened since uh, this past Sunday. And I'll put a link to that uh, registration page or at least the website in the video description. Anyway, that's it for today, November 29th, Wednesday here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.